Hi y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a word from the Holy Spirit to share about an app that someone is going to be releasing in the future. So what the Holy Spirit said to me on May 13th is the word future land. He said there will be an app by this name. The concept will have to do with a future land and it will be popular. And then he said this will occur in one to two years. So I'm going to stop and give a side note here. Some people may be asking the question, why does the Holy Spirit give you vague timelines or like a vague description of something when he could just speak something very specifically? And here's the answer, and it's very biblical. The word says that we should prophesy according to the measure of our faith. So I believe the Holy Spirit knows that sometimes if he gave me too specific of a detail, that I would not have the faith to share that detail, you know, and that I would leave it out. So I believe the Holy Spirit gives me what I'm capable of sharing right now according to the measure of faith that I'm using. So I hope that helps explain that. Okay, and then he said about this app, many people will use it. It will seem harmless to the casual observer, but it will include sinful acts that have been viewed as shameful in the past. And then he said sinful situations that should not be mentioned here. And then I begin to see a vision of puzzle pieces. And I heard the Lord say there will be a puzzling aspect to it and a find it feature. And then I saw these woods and trees and grass and gardens. And he said, these things will be included. And then he said, it's going to pull people away from me. And so I know that there's so many apps out there available that are already doing this, <laughs> that are already pulling people away from the Lord, right? Right already full of sinful things, but I believe this one is going to be different in that it's going to be a kind of a cultural shift in what is okay and what's not. You know, that, that line between righteousness and unrighteousness is going to be messed up even, even to a greater extent. You know, even so much so that I believe the Lord is saying here that, um, that Christians are not even going to realize what's happening and what's wrong. You know, they're going to be sucked into it. So this is what the Holy Spirit is asking me to do. He's asking me to say this right now. He's asking me to call those who are listening into repentance from the shameful acts that you're already involved in. So I don't know what's happening in your life right now, but the Holy Spirit knows. He sees every little detail, everything. He sees the movies we watch, the, the shows we watch, the websites we visit. He sees the people that we hang out with, the things we've said, the things we've done. He, he sees and knows the very thoughts in our mind and the very desires of our hearts. But here's the good news, is that when unrighteousness is present, the gospel can come in and it can fix everything. The good news of Jesus' death and resurrection can bring cleanliness, it can bring righteousness. It can bring forgiveness. It doesn't matter how deep and dark that well goes. The love of Jesus and the blood of Jesus can cover all of it. Listen to me, my friend. This is good news for you today. You may be stuck in sin that you've tried to get out of, or, or there may be like this weight of shame on you that you've, you've tried to get out from under because of past sins or things you've tried to get away from. It may be a habit that you can't break, and the Holy Spirit can break it in an instant by the power of the blood of Jesus. And listen to me. He can remove the shame and he can remove the guilt and he can remove the condemnation. This is what Romans 8, 9 through 10 says. It says, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Listen to me. You can have righteousness with God, fellowship with God, if you know Jesus personally, if you, if you have his Holy Spirit abiding in you. And that happens when you believe in what Jesus did on the cross. It doesn't happen when you clean yourself up enough. It doesn't happen when you do enough righteous works or good things or you go to church long enough. It doesn't happen when you read the Bible long enough. It happens when you believe that Jesus died for you and he paid the price for all of your sins when he died. Listen to me. God is reaching out his hand to people right now and he's saying, accept my grace right now. 
be clean, be cleansed, be washed white as snow. The Lord is wanting to rip all of that, all of the shame, all of the guilt, all of the lies of the enemy off right now. And he's wanting to set you on a path of freedom and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit and righteousness with God. I'm going to pray right now. And then I'm going to read another verse after that. But I want you to pray with me. Right now, don't wait. Don't wait. Surrender to the Lord and let His grace cover you. Let the blood of Jesus cover you. Let His love cover all of your sins. Say, Jesus, I have been running from you, even in little ways. But I'm saying no more right now. This is a stopping point, and I am repenting of my sin. I'm turning away from it right now, and I'm saying, Lord Jesus, save me and cleanse me. Forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross, and when you died, you took the punishment for every single sin of mine upon yourself, and I believe, Jesus, that you rose again on the third day, And because of your sacrifice, I get to be made clean and righteous in God's eyes right now. And I want you to stretch your faith right now. If there's something, if there's still a nagging doubt or a nagging feeling of, you know, like, no, this is not, this is not going to do it, whatever it may be, or no, I'm too sinful, or no, I'm too far gone, or no, I've, I've been too much of a hypocrite. It doesn't matter. You, you, you just reach out your hand to Jesus. The word says, when we seek him with our whole heart, we will find him. And listen to me, when you find him, you find freedom. The word says, uh, who the son sets free is free indeed. Completely free. You get to be made complete in Christ today. You get to be made completely righteous in God's eyes. Call out to Jesus in your own way right now. And say, Jesus, come into my life. Say, Jesus, overwhelm me with your goodness and your grace. Say, Jesus, overwhelm me with your freedom right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Now say this with me. Say, Jesus, I'm not going to live my my life my way any longer, but I'm going to live for you. And I'm going to be led by your Holy Spirit who lives inside of me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you baptize people right now with fresh wind, fresh fire, with a move of your spirit, Lord. Thank you. With your presence, give them the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. Give them peace that surpasses understanding. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Listen to me. If you prayed with me, I want you to let me know. I want you to leave a comment below and let me know so that I can celebrate with you and I can also be praying for you. That would mean a lot to me. And I'm so excited. I'm so very excited because I know what it's like to be set free. I know what it's like to be living in one place and then Jesus to bring me out of darkness and into the light. There's so much joy there. But here's my encouragement to you is the devil will try to come back and he'll try, to, he'll try to pull you back as much as he can, back into things like condemnation and shame and even sin habits. And here is the good news. The grace of God does not stop working. And just because you make a mistake, it doesn't stop working. It doesn't stop being what we really need and what can really set us free. So if, if the devil tries uh, to overplay his hand in your life, just do the same thing again. Come back into fellowship with God, with the Holy Spirit, by believing in what Jesus has done. Just stand on that truth every single day and you're gonna see sin habits break off and you're gonna experience so much joy and freedom in Christ. This is what Romans verse one, uh, chapter eight, verse one says. It says, therefore there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death for what the law could not do, meaning we can never earn righteousness with God. We can never do enough to please God through our own efforts and our own works. What the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. It's a gift, y'all. His grace is a gift and it's available every day. 
It says, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So when we turn our lives over to Jesus and we just begin to abide in him daily, we read the word and we spend time with him. And if you need to go get baptized, go get baptized if you haven't done that yet. And if you've received Jesus, go do that as an act of obedience and just start to surrender to the Holy Spirit every single day. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. You know, Jesus encourages us to do that in Luke 11, 9 through 13. He encourages us to ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. Just spend time with the Lord and let his freedom wash over you every day and begin to walk according to the Spirit. When the Holy Spirit begins to speak things in your heart, he begins to lead you and guide you, just do what he says out of obedience and you're gonna see the Lord respond to your faith with mighty works of power. You're gonna see him respond to your faith by using you as a vessel in his kingdom, by using you to reach other people with the gospel, by using you to even uh, pray for people to get healed and things like that. God wants to use you to do the same things that Jesus did when he was on earth, to continue doing that now. Jesus is alive and he is working through his people now, through his body, the same way that he was working when he was here on earth. And that is through the power of the Holy Spirit in us. So I hope this has been encouraging. I encourage you to get into the Word of God every single day. Stay in the Word and stay close to your Savior. I love you all so much, and I'll see you next time.